Zastam's dreams are finally coming true. He has walked the paths of the doomed and gone unscathed past the devouring portal. His destiny lies beneath the Feymount, and when he looks to the future, he sees all of Faerun turned into a great charnel house, full of undead creatures which do his bidding. The other Zolkirs have only one choice, follow him, willingly or unwillingly. Those who do so willingly are to be rewarded. Those who do not lose both life and soul and become Zastam's slaves. He means to do this, believe me. Seek the paths of the doomed and you'll see what I speak of. In last Sunday's video, we discussed the setting that Baldur's Gate 3 takes place in, and I briefly highlighted the nation of Thay, the land of the undead far to the east of Baldur's Gate. So in today's video, the third video in this new Sunday lore series, we'll be discussing the Supreme Lich Ruler himself, Saz Tam, a powerful figure whose ambitions extend far beyond that of his own lands. Saz Tam is actually in the Baldur's Gate 2 Throne of Baal expansion, and he may play a big role in Baldur's Gate 3. At the very least, we know for a fact that he'll be referenced several times. More on that in the video description. Before we jump into it, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the Forgotten Realms Wiki, which does an excellent job compiling and sourcing Forgotten Realms lore. I'll leave a link below. Zastam was born in the year 1104 Dale Reckoning, around 388 years before the events in Baldur's Gate 3. He was born in the eastern Faerun nation of Thay, which is ruled by a magocratic ruling class known as the Red Wizards. In Saz's youth, he was already lusting for power, and he ended up killing his own mentor, giving him sole access to his mentor's collection of ancient books, powerful elixirs, and magical devices. He would then go on to reanimate his mentor's body to patrol the Citadel Halls as an undead servant, but this was done more so out of practicality rather than showing a sign of superiority. Saz's ambition for power would only grow, and he would hire several skilled adventurers to seek out and bring back to him even more powerful enchanted items, and over time he grew to become a very powerful wizard. When he reached the age of 53, he led a group of red wizards to kill the Zulkir of Necromancy, allowing him to become the successor of that prominent ruling position in the land of Thay. Being a Zulkir meant that you had earned a title of power among the ruling Red Wizard class, and there was one Zulkir for each school of magic. Eight in total formed the Council of Zulkirs. The goal of this council was to rule the nation of Thay, but each Zulkir was banned from practicing magic outside of their own school, therefore ensuring a better balance of power among the eight. Zastam had now become the Zulkir of Necromancy. One of his rival Red Wizards would end up challenging Zas to a duel, and Zas, with the aid of his powerful enchanted necklace, fired off 12 fireballs before releasing an onslaught of powerful necromatic spells. Zas emerged victorious. Just two years later, Zas led an army against the northern neighboring nation of Rashomon, and he was mortally wounded in battle. He was prepared though, as his death would become the start of his new, even more potent form. Powerful magic coursed through his body, and he was transformed into a lich, one of, if not the most powerful form of undeath that one can achieve. We don't know exactly how he achieved lichdom, but his lifetime of gathering powerful items and elixirs and honing his magical skills certainly played a large role in it. Before we continue on with his story, I do want to make note of his personality. Zas was a very talented manipulator and planner, but he was also quite polite and civilized. He was known to treat his favorite servants with fairness and even kindness, and many who have encountered him may even describe him as calm, learned, sophisticated, and pleasant. Zas also showed immense respect towards those who possessed the cleverness and skill to foil his plans. Alongside being very well dressed, he also used preservation spells to preserve his skin from total rot he would use many illusion spells to hide his deathly appearance, as not everyone knew that he was a lich. With all that said though, nothing comes between Zas and his ambitions, and he was willing to conduct great acts of evil to further his goals. And when he was disrespected, he would become consumed by a controlled icy rage that not many would want to be a target of. Over the course of the next several hundred years, Zas continued to grow in power, 
and he schemed to find a way to gain ultimate control over the nation, which could only be done by gaining control over the other Zalkirs. In the year 1352 DR, 16 years before Baldur's Gate 1 and around 140 years before Baldur's Gate 3, Zas developed his Animate Dread Warrior spell and began using it to amass an army. He was now not only looking to take control of the Zalkirs, but he was also plotting to overthrow the governments of the cities on the Sea of Fallen Stars. In 1375, Zas secretly orchestrated the murder of two of the Zalkirs and betrayed a Thayan army with the goal of spreading fear and uncertainty in the nation of Thay. After hindering the proper investigations of these murders, he then went on to try to convince the nation that in order to solve Thay's current problems, he would need to be elected as the supreme ruler of Thay. Not everyone was okay with this notion though, and Zas ended up having to revert to force to achieve his rulership and he went on to declare war on all of the opposing Zolkirs. This was the start of the Thayan Civil War that Zas would end up ultimately winning, making him the supreme ruler of Thay. In need of more power to remain in control, Zas struck a deal with the god of tyranny, Bane. Bane gave Zas several godly boons, such as the ability to locate corpses within the realm, and this was done in exchange for Zas giving up his soul to Bane after 1,000 years have passed. These boons made Zas unimaginably powerful, and by 1478 DR, Thay was a country under Zas's absolute control. Zas, however, wanted more, and he came into possession of an ancient Netherese book that contained the instructions for performing a ritual known as the Unmaking. Performing this ritual would destroy all life on Toril and beyond, and ascend the caster to divinity, making them a greater god. Achieving this would not only give Zas the power he always dreamed of, but it would also allow him to escape the deal that he made with Bane, so he doesn't have to give up his soul. To conduct the ritual, one must create Dread Rings, which are huge fortress-like structures that serve as ritual sites where necromancers can steal and channel the souls of the living. Zas began creating several rings, and he even had one built far away from Thay in Neverwinter Wood. Ultimately, his plan failed though, and the Dread Ring in Neverwinter Wood was destroyed. Zas Tam, however, still remains the supreme ruler of Thay, and he is of course extremely powerful alongside his army of undead. He always seems to be two steps ahead, but it's almost certain that he has something in the works in present-day Forgotten Realms, and I'm sure we'll hear even more about him in Baldur's Gate 3. Now there's a lot of other information about Saz Tam that I left out because I'm trying to keep these videos fairly simple. The most important thing is that you get an idea who this lich is. And also, if you saw the Honor Among Thieves movie, many of you would be aware that Saz Tam is featured in the video several times and there's kind of a plot revolving around him a certain extent. I don't want to give away any spoilers for that because that movie is still pretty new. Now, like I mentioned in the intro of the video, I did do an entire deep dive into a hidden quest in Baldur's Gate 3's early access that involves Saz Tam. I'm going to leave a link to that below. It's one of my favorite videos that I've done, so make sure to go check it out. And thank you guys so much for watching these videos. I'm hoping to put out a new one every Sunday or so, and we'll continue uh, expanding our knowledge on Forgotten Realms lore. Catch you on the next one.